In order to consistently produce quality products, plant processes need to be maintained within prescribed limits. Statistical process control charts are valuable tools that help operators analyze process variation and take action when necessary. To use control charts effectively, operators must be able to make some basic interpretations about the ways that plotted values fall on a chart. Control charts can help an operator determine if a process is in control, out of control, or unstable. A process is in control when no abnormal variation is present. The plotted values of an in-control process typically fall in a random pattern around the process center line on a control chart. An out-of-control process usually has some abnormal variation that causes plotted values to fall outside of the control limits. However, sometimes process values remain within the control limits even though abnormal variation is present. This condition is referred to as instability and it often forms a recognizable pattern on a control chart. Causes of instability can include changes in process materials, changes in sampling techniques, and changes in process variables such as temperature, pressure, and flow. Each change can cause unusual patterns to form on control charts. The way that a pattern on a control chart is interpreted often depends on the type of chart. On X-bar charts, for example, plotted values that fall near the upper control limit may indicate that the average value of the data collected from the process has increased. Plotted values that fall near the lower control limit on an X-bar chart may indicate that the average value of the data has decreased. The patterns on R charts have different meanings. For example, plotted values falling near the upper control limit on an R chart indicate that there's too much variation in the data. In other words, the difference between the largest value and the smallest value is greater than normal. When plotted values fall near the lower control limit on an R chart, there is less variation than normal in the data. If values exceed the control limits on an R chart or an X bar chart, the process is out of control. However, the lower control limit of an R chart is often set at zero, so you may not see values outside of the lower control limit. In some situations, abnormal variations exist in a process even though the values plotted on a control chart remain within the control limits. This type of situation is often referred to as instability. When a process is unstable, the plotted points often form a recognizable pattern on the control chart. Let's take a look at a specific type of pattern known as a run. A run is characterized by a group of data points consistently falling above or below the process center line. Mathematically, it's almost impossible to form this type of pattern from normal variation. Many conditions can cause a run. For example, if a thermocouple fails, the indication it produces may be a constant reading. Averaging this constant reading with other values will cause the points on an X-bar chart to move towards the constant value indicated by the failed thermocouple, which could create a run. The important thing to remember about a run is that it's an indication of a problem. Another pattern that indicates a problem is a jump or level change. A jump is evident when the plotted points on a control chart that are randomly falling around the process center line suddenly shift toward the upper or lower control limit. There are many reasons why a jump can occur, including a change in the materials entering a process or a change in conditions upstream. For example, the temperature of the material entering this process is used to plot a control chart. If the temperature suddenly increases, it can cause a noticeable jump in the plotted values on the control chart. Another pattern of instability is a trend. A trend is a pattern of points that gradually moves in an upward or downward direction. A trend could be an indication that process equipment is malfunctioning, that the portions of the materials entering a process have changed or that properties of those materials, such as the purity, density, or viscosity, have changed. A cycle is a pattern of instability that forms when data points fall above and below the process center line in an alternating pattern. A cycle pattern could mean that the process is being adjusted too frequently. This is called over control. It could also mean that the amount of adjustment made is too great. 
Runs, jumps, trends, and cycles are some patterns of instability that can appear on SPC charts. The causes of the patterns may vary, but an operator must be able to recognize them before action can be taken. Causes of instability can include changes in process materials, changes in sampling techniques, and changes in process variables such as temperature, pressure, and flow. Each change can cause unusual patterns to form on control charts. A jump is evident when the plotted points on a control chart that are randomly falling around the process center line suddenly shift toward the upper or lower control limit. There are many reasons why a jump can occur, including a change in the materials entering a process or a change in conditions upstream. For example, the temperature of the material entering this process is used to plot a control chart. If the temperature suddenly increases, it can cause a noticeable jump in the plotted values on the control chart. Accurately interpreting control charts and responding properly to problems are keys to maintaining consistent product quality. Here we'll see how an operator responds to some problems that show up on control charts. We'll base our examples on a distillation system represented by this simplified illustration. Here is the distillation tower, and here is a reboiler which supplies heat to the tower. During operation, a fluid mixture is fed into the tower and heated so that it separates into a liquid and a vapor. The vapor is drawn off the top of the tower, and the liquid, which is the desired product, is collected and drawn off at the bottom of the tower. The purity of the liquid depends on the temperature in the tower, which is controlled by regulating steam flow to the reboiler. This liquid purity is monitored by an online analyzer called a chromatograph. The chromatograph provides the data used to plot control charts. If the purity of the liquid decreases or increases beyond a certain amount, the product can't be used. This operator uses purity data from the chromatograph to plot a moving X-bar chart and a moving R chart. In this example, the operator notices a trend developing on the moving X-bar chart. The plotted values are moving toward the lower control limit. The moving R chart appears normal. Even though the moving R chart appears normal, the pattern on the moving X bar chart indicates that the process is unstable. The moving X bar chart shows that the average value of the chromatograph readings is moving away from the ideal value. And since the range of values appears normal, the decrease is occurring gradually liquid purity is slowly approaching its lower limit. When an unstable condition is detected, operators typically check written logs and other current readings of process conditions to try to determine the cause of the problem. In this case, the operator finds that in the last few hours, the flow rate of the fluid mixture entering the tower increased. To maintain liquid purity, the increased flow rate should be matched by an increase in steam flow to the reboiler. An automatic controller positions a steam flow valve as needed to maintain the proper steam flow. The operator suspects that the controller for the steam flow control valve hasn't responded properly to the increased flow to the tower. That would explain the gradual decrease in purity. In response to the problem, the operator notifies his supervisor. Then he manually raises the controller set point to increase steam flow to the reboiler. This action returns the process to normal. SPC allowed the operator to recognize an unstable condition and take appropriate action before the process went out of control. As our next example shows, this doesn't always happen. In this case, when the operator plots the most recent value on the moving X bar chart, that value falls outside of the upper control limit. This tells the operator that the process is out of control. The average of the chromatograph readings is too high. Too high an average indicates that the purity of the liquid is above the acceptable level. The last value plotted on the moving R chart is above the center line, but it is still within the control limits. The R chart indicates that the difference between the highest and lowest readings is greater than it had been, so it reflects the sudden change in purity. The operator checks his written logs and other current readings to try to determine the cause. 
He knows that a sudden increase in tower temperature could explain the abrupt increase in purity. He finds that in the last hour, steam flow to the reboiler increased unexpectedly. The operator contacts his supervisor and recommends that maintenance check the steam flow control system. To bring the process back into control in the meantime, the operator manually positions the steam flow control valve. QSUM is a method of using SPC that typically involves a computer. QSUM stands for cumulative summation. What's involved in the cumulative summation is the difference between the average value of the variable that's being monitored and its desired value, or aim. When QSIM detects an out-of-control condition, it may automatically adjust the process, or it may simply recommend an adjustment. QSIM was developed as an alternative to manually plotting and interpreting process control information. QSIM is able to respond quickly to small process changes. This means that it can keep a process average at or near the aim at all times. If a QSIM system experiences problems, or if it is provided with inaccurate information, an off-aim condition can occur. Two of the more common causes of an off-aim condition are overreaction and underreaction. When overreaction occurs, too many adjustments are made. And when underreaction occurs, too few adjustments are made. In either case, product quality will vary more than it should. Operators who work with an automatic system such as QSIM should know how to adjust the system to keep it operating correctly. For example, if an operator makes an adjustment to the process that is being controlled, he may then have to make some changes to QSIM to allow for that adjustment. A QSIM system typically has a QSIM reset mode that allows the operator to reset the system and an aim adjust mode that allows an operator to change the aim value for the process variable. In this example, the operator notices a trend developing on the moving X-bar chart. The plotted values are moving toward the lower control limit. The moving R chart appears normal. Even though the moving R chart appears normal, the pattern on the moving X-bar chart indicates that the process is unstable. QSIM was developed as an alternative to manually plotting and interpreting process control information. QSIM is able to respond quickly to small process changes. This means that it can keep a process average at or near the aim at all times. If a QSIM system experiences problems, or if it is provided with inaccurate information, an off-aim condition can occur. The data that's used for plotting attribute control charts is based on things that can be counted. These are known as attributes. Two important attributes are defects and defective products. We'll cover four types of charts that use these attributes as data. They are a C chart, a U chart, an NP chart, and a P chart. C charts and U charts deal with the number of defects in the product. A defect is a product characteristic, such as color, size, or shape, that does not match design specifications. This sample, for instance, has one defect. Its color is wrong. All other characteristics are acceptable. A C chart is used to display the actual number of defects per item. Like any control chart, it has an upper control limit, a lower control limit, and a process center line. The horizontal axis of this C chart represents time. In this case, the process is sampled every hour. For other applications, sampling might be based on the amount of product produced. For instance, every tenth container might be sampled. The vertical axis represents the number of defects per sample. The sampling size for an attribute chart is based on the number or amount of product samples needed to determine a data point for the chart. The sampling size is constant for a particular application. To see how a C chart is plotted, we'll use this process where plastic pellets are made. The pellets must be a certain size. Every hour, a one pound sample of pellets is removed from the process. Pellets that are the wrong size are counted. So, in this case, sampling is done every hour. The sample size is one, because one sample provides enough information to produce a data point. The total number of wrong size pellets in the sample is the attribute used for the C chart. If the number exceeds a control limit, it could mean that there's a problem somewhere in the process. If the C chart indicates a problem, 
some type of response will be necessary. Another type of attribute chart is a U-chart. A U-chart is used to plot the average number of defects per item. We'll use the same pellet making process to see how a U-chart is plotted. For this chart, five one-pound samples are removed from the process every hour. The sample size is five, so five samples are needed to produce a data point. Each data point will represent the average of five samples. The number of wrong size pellets from all five samples is totaled and divided by five to produce an average value for the U-chart. If the plotted values fall outside of the control limits, the process is out of control and a response is needed. A defective product is a product that is unusable because it has one or more defects. The quality standards set by the company or by the end user determine how many defects are allowed before a product becomes unusable and is considered defective. NP charts and P charts deal with the number of defective products produced by a process. An NP chart is used to display the actual number of defective products produced by a process. The vertical axis of an NP chart represents the number of defective products. The horizontal axis on this chart represents time. On other charts, it might represent a percentage of the products produced, such as every tenth product. We'll use the same pellet making process to see how an NP chart is plotted. For this chart, five one pound samples of pellets are collected every hour. Any sample with more than 10 pellets that are the wrong size is considered to be defective. Every hour, the number of defective samples is totaled, and that value is plotted on the NP chart. If plotted values exceed the control limits, there's a problem somewhere. A P chart is similar to an NP chart, except that it indicates the percentage of defective products. The vertical axis represents percent defective, and the horizontal axis represents time. In this example, samples are collected from the process every hour and checked. Any sample with more than 10 defects is considered to be defective. The total number of defective samples is divided by the number of samples collected, and the result is multiplied by 100 to produce a percentage figure, which is plotted on the p-chart. As long as the plotted values fall within the control limits, the process is in control. C charts, U charts, NP charts, and P charts can all be used to monitor attributes in a process. Which chart is used depends on the process and the information needed to control the process. Another type of attribute chart is a U chart. A U chart is used to plot the average number of defects per item. A P chart is similar to an NP chart, except that it indicates the percentage of defective products.